June 10th, 1982. This is Stella Wallace, and I'm at the home of Morris Coyle, interviewing him and his wife about their, the history of Fort Augustus. Well, no, I mean, it's just a lot of them old stories, but uh, we don't know where they're. I don't know. It all depends on what you want to hear. Yeah, what you want to hear, huh? Well, almost anything that you've got to offer. You, I, Father Ever told me that you had some old stories of the old people. I had some. <gasps> no, there's always a lot of this. I mean, got really you no know, funny stories. Most of them are old, more or less sad stories about hardship. But uh, I guess they were happy though. Mm. Uh, yeah. They had no roads or anything, you know, they had to walk, no horses. They had to stump on the land by hand. Oh, so tractors haven't put you out. No, they, they wouldn't have oxen either? No, they had no oxen either. I guess probably after a while they probably got oxen, probably some oxen, yeah. not a great many. Then they get a, managed to get a horse. And uh, they had no wagons or chariots or anything. Managed after a while to get them. How long would it take them to clear a plot of land? Oh, well, I don't know how really long it is. They must have cleared it fairly fast because uh, they came, my great grandfather came to Ramor in about 33, and yeah, around 50, I guess, 1850 or something, in the 1850s, they had quite Quite a lot of land clear. So they became quite prosperous after a while? Well, they were comfortable. Yeah. I don't think they were, you wouldn't be called comfortable or prosperous or well to in those days, but they were quite comfortable. They had no debts, mm -hmm. they had little money. Would there be any antagonism between the Scots and the, the Irish? No, uh, not around here. I think Irish and the French had a part of it, didn't they? No, the French, there weren't many French here. There were no French around here when the Irish came here. They were all gone. They were always grumpy about the Irish chasing the French. Oh, the English. English? Oh, my English. Oh, yeah. would, would they... Uh, you know, mix, have parties together? Oh, or? yeah, the French and the Irish and the Scotch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, the, I guess some of the Scotch people are more or less a little bit scared of the Irish, but they, they didn't have more fighting. Yeah. It's great fun. It's great fun when they have a concert. You know, no, but they did more fighting. Huh? The Irish people were more for fighting than the yeah, Scotch people. The uh, parties, dances. Some of us uh, Scotch sugar, sugar, you know, the Irish. But the Irish you know, were stepped out. They were the whole thing. The Irish fight to the last minute. <laughs> but uh, the Irish and Biscuit, Biscuit was a Scotch settlement. Yeah, that was. They used to come back and forth. We were back and forth and dances and parties between Dromor and Dromor was all Irish. His good scotch. Then there was any trouble. Everybody enjoyed the pubs. In my day. Mm. I don't know our dad or what it was like. I guess it was all of that. But the Scotch are uh, very good people. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, 
Then in later years they had heart the diphtheria, they had diphtheria, a lot of the families died. When was that? That was when they first came out? No, that was in 1870s. No, 1875, my father's family, my his mother, my grandmother, two brothers and, and his only sister, they died within the same week, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. By that time, the community was pretty well built up? Yeah, oh. pretty well then, yeah. Uh-huh. And a couple, couple more years after that, the, there came another epidemic of it, and there was a lot of families lost four and five children. I heard Mama used to tell us that there were seven funerals, whatever, one week of aunts. Yeah, there were. Some of them died and there two families. Two families. Two, seven funerals in the week, one week. And then there was two or three of her brothers and sisters died. Three of them were works. I was about 13 or something died that time. That year was the superior. They had coffins for them, didn't they? Oh no, well, once they took the theory, once they took it and, and had it, well, they started making the coffin. No, there were long boots, that's what they were, leather boots, and they, the shoemaker, he came to the home and made the boots in the home. He traveled around the country? Yeah, the same as the, as the tailors, they made the clothes, clothing, for men's clothing, he'd come and stay, travel around and stay in the home for, it depends on many of the family that weren't needed clothes, clothing. And uh, then there was another woman, she used to go out and do the sewing, women's clothing. Were there a lot of uh, people, you know, in businesses like that? Or? No, well, I suppose in every community had one of each, something like that. Mm. Well, it would be like in the, in the parish here, where you got to the parish, I suppose was one shoemaker or two shoemakers, and I think he was a couple of tailors. And, the women, they called them seamstress. Uh, they didn't call them dressmakers. I don't know what's the reason they called them seamstress. But, and, uh, and they said they got sheep, chore the sheep, they washed the wool. Yeah. They carried it, the wool themselves, and they spun it and wove it. Made blankets, made them. Made a shirt material over shirts for men to wear, like in the woods. 
And they make their shirts made on them. Yeah, well, they wove the homespun for them to make the suits, yeah, too. Make their suits. Imagine not on your back, and it would be as worse than on the road. You wouldn't be cold. Huh? Keep you warm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a great knitter. Never bothered with the stores. Made up, mom, mom, I would never make it. Gloves, knit double gloves, knit double knit gloves. She took it from our father and mother, Myra, and they kept Myra. Her, her parents? Or she yeah, her parents kept Myra. They had beautiful things. You know. They brought things over with them? Right. They brought things over from Ireland with Yeah, them? oh yeah, they took furniture and everything that they had, whatever it was. Oh, I didn't see it all. That would be a great grandfather. Yeah, a great grandfather. What kind? Yeah, of grandma too. He was? No, they weren't very young, old, and they came out. Okay. No. Well, whatever they had, they took it with them. Yeah, they wouldn't be very old. Those here are very big mirrors, you know. People, you go to some people's houses, just to have a walk. I know about her family, her that'd be that'd be your great grandfather and grandmother took them out. And then they uh, had other things, you know. All that was different than they didn't have. Now you're lucky to have one in the hall or something like that. Straight down. They just had the side. They had to be. They had to be. A delicate person wouldn't live. A delicate person wouldn't survive. They used to make hats. I they called one of them was uh, one of them was called a hatter. Remember the part they talked about the hatter? Yeah, well, there was some man. He he made hats. They called him the hatter. I don't think there are too many pictures with many cameras. Oh, no, take In them days. You just live by yourself. <laughs> Never talked about it. But uh, they, they all claim that what they had was uh, it was good, you know. It was good and wise for a farmer, but it wouldn't go, I don't think, very well in the city. Much like that. It'd be pretty rough in the city, I imagine. Rough over there. Just get to church. Oh, yes, the cities wasn't too up to date when the first started, and Charlottetown wasn't. When did they build a road through here? Oh, yeah. When did they build a road through? Build a road through here? Or did they travel through up and No, down that's river? part of the, right out here, that's the original road. Right out okay. there, yeah. It's a five houses road. Five houses, if you ever hear it on that. That was about the, the French, the French houses? Yeah, the five, okay. French five. That's the, right out there, the original road. But up there, about between here and the cottage, it branched off and went out on a, on a slope. Way, way across, about half a mile, and then it stopped again. But right there, well, that's the, right there, that's the original road. That's about 150 years old. Where would the, the five houses have been? They were down along the river. The river's right down here, the Hillsborough yeah. River. The houses were, they all settled, even the Irish, they settled close to the river too. Mm -hmm. And they used to have wells, dig wells, you know, for to get water. And when we came here, we were, they told us to look out for the well, we were down in the field. But that, since that, it's been filled up with the, I guess the people doing the business, like, to and to people. 
shame. Stones. And there was another place out here where no water on the side of the road uh, on that field there. Well, one that was down towards the river there was two foundations down there, Foundation. two old basements or cellars down yeah. there. I guess there was a tree down there, barely filled in, but you can see them there. Are they still there now? One of them is, if you can find it, and it's all growing up now. <laughs> we went away and we left the farm here and grew up on it. And we sold it, all but a small part of it. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's not too many of the old basement cellars around now. There's one down here, but it's hard to, be hard to get to it. And, uh, It was all filled in. It was, I don't know, there were four, four more than 50 years ago, but they're not there now. Mm. And there were several wells, and all, they all filled in, all close to the river. Do you, do you go to certain people now, like Grant, that you think would know? Yeah. Well, would you not? Would the Heritage Foundation have? Well, they didn't have very much, but they had a few and they made the best of it. Yeah, and they were satisfied with it and happy with it. I don't know what kind of bread they made in the old fireplaces. They used to get them to walk in the I don't think there was any such a thing as loaf bread. No. It used to be bannocks. Bannocks, yeah. Yeah. Bit. What? You ever make, mother ever make bannocks? No. Just to make it, mix it up, you know. And Make it around like a pie plate, you know, but not in a pie plate, and just put on the top of the stove, get all the good fire from the stove. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to do. Grandma used to tell us things. Good and fresh. Huh? Yeah, it was good and fresh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not a shell. But I, I guess they were the, fat, you know. They really weren't miserable or delicate or sick to open around. They were really uh, healthy. Yeah. Any of, my, any of them did. I told me they were Irish. They were really healthy. That is a picture. What other kind of food would they eat? Oh, well, just pure beef. Poor, isn't it? Poor, they're poor. Sometimes. I don't know what kind of meat they eat in the... First year to vote because they didn't have very many animals of their own. Oh, that's true. That's true. Must be eggs or something. Pardon? What? It must be eggs. Well, they didn't have hens either. No. Not many. Oh, that's right, too. I don't know. Well, that, they, they, they weren't long out, so they got pigs. They let the pigs go in the woods all summer. That's the way they eat, eat uh, beech nuts. But huh. well, I wouldn't know there. They'd have pork, I guess. Would they bother putting up fences? Pardon? They wouldn't bother putting up fences? Just... No, no, that's when the pigs are... That was the, I can remember myself when seeing some little house along the road where they had for pigs, the pigs had come back to the... The gate, they put up a good fence on the road so the pigs couldn't get home. 
And, <laughs> and uh, carry them over some water and some swill and so beat them at the at the road. And small buildings that the pigs go in sleep in the night or rainy nights or something. And they go to the hardwoods in the daytime meet. The fall they fatten up in beech nuts. And then they, they, they round them in for the winter? Yeah, they get them, get a hold of them, get them home, and butch them. And the, uh, the cows and everything, they're nothing fenced in, the cows are all out. They turn them out in the mornings, in the summertime. There is, they're all fences, they're pole, rail, wooden fences. And gates. And the roads of cattle, and cows, and horses, pigs, sheep, and everything else was turned out to, to the woods. Would they have much problem with the the wild animals getting them? No, I I guess it is of course to the bears, but the uh, I guess after thirty or forty years, the bears were all killed off. They did have some problems with bears and that. And of course, yeah. well, so that's the only animals that would bother them. I don't think there was any other white animals that are vicious. Oh, there were plenty of foxes around. Some white cats. Would, would the people that came over, would they have spoken Gaelic? Or did they yeah, I guess probably there were some of them. I don't know, I've never heard tell, I've never heard any of my people talking about and speaking Gaelic, but uh, I've heard uh, on my mother's side where down Iona, where she came from, I heard my grandfather saying that he, he used to go around and they uh, one place in home place in place he was going he said he used to hate to go there with his father because they all the time was talk Gaelic and uh, he didn't uh, he couldn't understand it so he, well uh, they had I guess the another custom they had when any person would die, they'd, uh, they'd get a keg of liquor and they'd get a, buy a whole box full of clay pipes and they'd, uh, one man's job was to cut tobacco and fill the pipes and everyone that came to the wake, they'd give him a clay pipe and pull it back. And he'd go over to the area. There's uh, sticks or slivers of sticks or wood that it's he you goes know, to the fireplace and light it and light his pipe. Drag them on, hardly. Yeah, they have plenty of room. Yeah, stay all night till daylight in the morning. Yeah, probably a couple of days. The custom. Huh? That was the custom. Yeah. Well, at one time, then they had the what they call the Irish cry or Irish lament or something. Yeah. They used to cry. It was weird, I guess, but. It'd be kind of like a, they would wail at it? Or? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Some parts. Yeah, kind of a whale or something. Yeah. Well, they said it was pretty pleasant. What would we find it that way? Anyway, it was. It, uh, it passed out, it passed out, that phase was all, that was, all, every, that was all phased out before our time. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. So it was the clay pipes. 
Ten o'clock in the night. Well, they that they could they figure that in one night, and and then the next night, the next day they bury them. That's was short. That they they'd have to work pretty busy to get a coffin made. But if they happened to die in the morning and had all for two days, well, they'd likely have that person in the coffin for the second night of the week. Oh, there's lots of other things, you know. And Jack might know something. What? Jack would Jack not know something. I don't know Jack very much, but more than that. Yeah. Is Jack your brother? Hmm. Their father was a great story man, you know. And he used to talk about the Irish. Who? And trainer. Do you know the trainer man who was over in Rome? The trainer that was out there used to go to your place and used to be talking about that. Oh, I don't know. He gave Sister Carmel McDonald a lot of information. Yeah. Sure what? He did, yeah. Uh, How long do you have at uh, this job to, to take the summer one? Yeah, it's just time. Oh, Jim O'Brien, he remembers it. He used to tell about it. Yeah, what did he do? Jim was here in Ireland. The one man killed. It was a fight between the Irish and the Scots. Irish and the Scots, yeah. What, the what? Irish. Right, fair. They, they call the, the Scottish Skeenics. Well, that was the name they called that branch of the Scotch down there, where they called them Skeenics. That's what, in my young days, that's all I ever heard tell of them now, people down there, with the fight, when they, they talk about it, you know, they come into the house and they be talking about it, and they talked about it quite often. I didn't pay that much attention to it. But they always talked about them when the Irish went down to fight the Skeenics. They were Scotch people. Some place around Belfast Church where the, the battle took place. They had hardwood sticks. And there was one man killed, I don't know. But I guess there were several injured. But there's a lot of them out to Auburn and Mountain Road went down. <laughs> Mm. Some here from Fort Augustus went. What? Yeah. Yeah. Walk down there. Walk. Well, I don't go that far to fight. But I was at uh, an election day. And why I can't tell you, I can't ask that question why they call them Skeenix. Could have been a district that Where they came from, from South or Scotland or something. I don't know what was the some part of Scotland that they came from. That's the nickname they had on them. Same as that's something, same as you see the Glasgow Irish, they, we always called the, the 
those people that came here, some of them moved to the moor, we called them Glasgow. Glassy O's. Glassy O's, yeah. I've heard that that long. Somebody that we called them Glassy O's. Oh, I still teach about the Uppy Birds. Huh? I sti still teach about the Uppy Birds. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what they're talking about. You don't know anybody around here? No. Never worried to the dash in the next center? Where are you supposed to be now? The Irish? Or... Oh, Would it be much of a different analogy between them? Between well, the Irish and the Scottish? No, I don't think there was very much. Oh, there was probably a little bit of it, but not that much. They all seem to agree and associate pretty good. Yeah, most of them. But I, 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 I tell you the truth, I never had a place with a brother. I didn't care much about the French, the way they are. The French seems to be uh, oh, more overbearing, like, don't you think? Everything like that, like they want to do to be ahead of it all, or, or, or so. mm. that's what I thought. I thought. But the uh, white coffee with everybody, some of them. I don't think they're too. The Acadian French are pretty good. Yeah. Thank you.